I'm Katie Stolp. I'm the local history librarian at Appleton Public Library, and today I'm going to show you a quick overview of how to use our library's obituary index. If you have Appleton area ancestors or ancestors who had ties to the Appleton area and might have had their obituary or death notice featured in our Appleton newspapers, you're definitely going to check out this free index, which will help you find obituaries and death notices in our local newspapers. This is a really unique Appleton Public Library created database that began all the way back in 2000. Thanks to wonderful staff and volunteers, we've been continually adding entries to the index since then. The index is a name index to obituaries, death notices, and news stories that are related to local deaths that appeared in our local newspapers. Newspapers include the Post Crescent and a few precursors to the Post Crescent. All obituaries are included regardless of if if they died locally or not. For example, if it's somebody who died in Florida, but they had ties to the Appleton area and had their obituary published in the Post Crescent, they would be included in this index. You can access our obituary index through our website or by going to apl.org slash obit. And no library card is needed, so even if you aren't an Appleton Public Library card holder, you can still access our database no matter where you are with the internet. To use the index, you just search by name, a date of death, or a range of dates. And it's really unique that when you start typing a surname or a first name, it's going to give you a drop down option to help you catch some potential typos or misspellings. And I'll show you how this works in a little bit. From the index, then, you can find the exact date, section, and page number, as well as what newspaper this notice fe was featured in, and then be able to request a copy of this notice. This index is an ongoing project and is not complete. At this time, we have over 275,000 entries complete, and we're constantly adding historic and current entries regularly. You can go to the obituary index site to see what years are covered in the index at this time. And thanks to the hard work of our volunteers and staff, we have over 100 years complete and in this index at this time. If you need an entry uh, that is not included in the index at this time, you can use the request a search form on the website, but you must have a date of death or an approximate date of death. And then the library staff will search up to one week in our newspapers to see if we can locate a death notice or obituary for the person you're looking for. And again, I'll show you how this works in just a minute. This is just an index, so you'll notice when you're using the site that no actual obituaries or death notices are included on the site. Instead, what you can do is you can request a copy of that obituary or death notice right within that index, and it will be emailed to you free of charge within several business days. You could also use the information from the index to come into the library and use our microphone, which dates all the way back to 1853. From that microfilm machine, you can freely save that image to a USB or email it to yourself, or you can pay to print a copy of that obituary if you'd like. Additionally, we have some electronic resources that have some limited coverage of the Post Crescent. So our free library databases include Post Crescent Online through ProQuest, which has full text versions of obituaries and articles from 1999 to today. Or Internet Archive has a limited amount of digitized versions of the Post Crescent. Additionally, if you have a paid newspapers.com subscription, there is some Appleton and Post Crescent coverage on there as well. Or again, you can freely get a copy of this obituary or death notice emailed to you through the library. And again, I'll show you how that works in just a minute. The amount of information in each entry is going to vary depending on what was included in the actual newspaper. So obituaries generally are going to include a lot more information on the person who died, while death notices are going to have a lot less information. When available, the following information is going to be included in the index. So you'll see last name, first name, maiden name, nickname, a title like doctor, reverend, a death date, a birth date, place of birth, a spouse name, including if they had more than one spouse at, uh, during their life, you'd have uh, multiple spouses listed if they were included in the newspaper. You'll get that newspaper name, the date that notice appeared in the paper, what section and page number it appeared in, what type, if it's an obituary or a death notice or a news story, and then information on the cemetery if it's included in their notice. 
A person may appear more than once if they had more than one type of notice related to their death in the newspaper. So for example, they could have an obituary and a news story, or an obituary and a death notice, or all three. Each would be a separate entry. Entries are going to be recorded in the index exactly as they appear in the newspaper. So unfortunately, entries may be incomplete, they may be misspelled, or may feature information that was later corrected. So uh, keep in mind that the person writing the obituary or death notice is obviously not writing their own, so you definitely want to confirm every fact that you find in these news articles and obituaries with additional records and resources. Many people in the index are listed by their nicknames or may have initials instead of their full name, or if it's a woman, sometimes they're only listed under their husband's name. So thankfully in our index, we've tried to combat um, this difficulty in finding people. And we are see when you start typing a name in any of the name fields, the last name field, the first name field, or the maiden name field, it's going to show you options that you can then click on. These are actual spellings of results in the entries. So if a name doesn't appear in that drop down menu, you can try typing an alternative spelling of that name. You can also try searching with just a last name. You could search just by a death date and see all the related entries on that date, or you can search for entries within a certain date range. So if you're not for sure exactly when they died or when their notice might have appeared, you can do a seven day window or a 10 day window or a full month window to see what results are there for that time period and see if you can spot the person you're looking for in those entries. Every effort is made to be as accurate and complete as possible in our index. Unfortunately, we're humans creating this index, um, so errors do happen. We're happy to receive any notification of errors or omissions. Just see the link on the page to send us an email and let us know what we got wrong, and we're happy to correct it as soon as possible. Be aware when you're using the obituary index, you can't use the site if you're using an incognito or private browsing window, or it's going to give you the entire database and not just what you search for. So with over 275,000 uh, obituaries in there, you don't want to go through the whole index. You want to be sure that you're using a, a regular browsing window. Also, if your browser is blocking cookies, uh, you may have an issue with using the site and that search working correctly. So again, see some more details on our obituary index site for how to allow cookies on the page if you're having difficulties with it. Now we're going to do a live demonstration of how the obituary index works and how to request an actual obituary be emailed to you. To get to the site, you can either type in apl.org slash obit or start at our main website, apl.org. If you start at apl.org, if you hover over eLibrary, you'll see a drop down menu of some of our databases, and you'll see one of the popular ones listed is our obituary index. So you can go ahead and click on it right through there and be brought to that obituary index site. From here, you can see the search boxes where last name, first name, maiden name can be put in there. Or again, you could use just a date to return entries that are on a specific date of death or search a range of dates, um, starting with, you know, one or two dates and then going uh, one or two dates as well. Over here, you can also see the most recent paper that was entered. So you can see at this time, we only have up to the end of 2023 and have not added anything for this year yet. Down here is also where you would request an obituary search if you didn't find your ancestor in an index and they're supposed to be included um, because the year is included or maybe the year isn't included in our index. As long as you can provide us with an approximate date of death, uh, we will search within a week of that death date and see if we're able to locate uh, entry for your ancestor. If you scroll down, this is where it's going to give you the information on what years are included in the index. So you can see we have quite a lot of years covered or years that have been partially entered at this time that we're working on currently to continue adding to the index. Again, there's some more information on the obituary index and a link to the Post Crescent online website if you do have an Appleton Library card and can use that site. And then it's going to show you what newspapers are or will be included in the index and what years those include. 
And then all the way at the bottom, this is where if you do find an error or an omission in the index, uh, you can definitely click that link and then fill out the form to let us know what we need to correct. Scrolling back up to the top, I show you how a sample search works. So for example, I'm going to start typing my last name of Stilp, and you can see as I start typing, it's going to give you options down here. So you see all of these are actual entries that are included in the index. And I see a name that's similar to my last name, but it has an extra I in here. So I spell my last name S-T-I-L-P. This entry has S-T-I-L-I-P. So I want to click on that and see, hmm, maybe my ancestor's name was misspelled in the index. And if I'm just going to leave that last name there, I don't have to put in a first name or a maiden name if I don't want to. I can just click down to submit and do the search. So now I can see an entry for an Albert J. Stillup. And I can see just kind of an overview of what date he was born and died, what type of notice it is, where it is, and all that. But if I want to learn a little bit more, including, um, you know, maybe his spouse's name or where the cemetery he's buried in, if I click on this view details, it's going to give me additional details that are included in the index, but not on that results page. So now you can see, oh, I can see what his nickname was. I can see he was born in Appleton. He's buried in Riverside Cemetery. And so this is where I can request a copy of that obituary. Or again, I can see what newspaper date and name and page it is from here, and then be able to go into the library to get a copy of that obituary if I wanted to. I did pull up an actual obituary of this and did notice that this is a typo. So this is why it's helpful to start typing that name and then look at the options in that drop down menu. So I'm going to correct this entry in just a minute, um, but that shows you that sometimes there's typos um, and this is an easy way for you to locate a typo. So from here again, I can request a copy. And then this is going to allow you to fill out the form with your name, a phone number, and your email address, um, and then we're going to email that copy to you. After you hit submit, uh, that comes to us via email, and then just within about seven days, we will respond to that, be able to pull up that obituary, and then email it to you. Going back to the obituary index site, you can also search by date if you didn't find your ancestor by name, or you just wanted to search by date. Um, so, if I'm trying to find my ancestor who died on July 23rd, 1916, I can put that in there and then again, click submit. And then it's going to show me the names of the people who have that death date listed in their obituary. And I can see right here is my ancestor, Ira Holmes. And again, I can click on that view details to learn a little bit more about what's included in that obituary of him and then be able to request that copy right there if I wanted to. You can again also use the death range. So I could start by a certain date, say maybe I didn't have that exact date of when he died, and then I just wanted to put in a full month or a full week, I could do that as well. So now I can see all the different names and the death dates that they are included in here and what dates um, it is included in the paper. And you could always click on one of the columns to sort it a certain way. So right now it's sorting um, by the soonest to the latest, or I could click it again to start at the beginning of July all the way to the end of July if I wanted to. I could also sort it by last name and see all the alphabetical names there as well. So any of these you can click on to sort them by whatever options you want to. So feel free to use that as you'd like. You can also, of course, put in a full name in here um, or a maiden name. So I can, again, just put in still peer for a last or a maiden name and see maybe those married ancestors to um, see, you know, maybe I'm not sure what their married names are. So I can click submit. And now I can see everyone who's listed as having their maiden name as that and then what their married name is. And again, be able to click on that view details to learn a little bit more and to request that obituary there. 
Just quickly, I also wanted to mention, you may have gotten a hint from your Ancestry.com account directing you to our obituary index, or you may have seen a collection titled Web, Outagamey County, Wisconsin, U.S. Appleton Public Library Obituary Index from 1853 to 2012. This database is available in the paid version of Ancestry.com, or you can find it in the library edition of Ancestry.com. So you might see an index entry similar to this for Charlotte Stilp, where it lists all the information that you would find in our obituary index, and then it has a URL that you can click on and be brought into the index. You'd then have to complete that search within our index in order to then pull up that information and request that obituary. Or if you do have a newspapers.com account, they do list that right over here, and then you can click into that because Ancestry is trying to link you to all the helpful records available on that person. I did want to let you know that that collection on Ancestry has not been updated since 2012. So you're definitely going to want to go to our APO website and use that obituary index like I showed you in our example, because a lot more entries have been added since 2012. For example, we have over 275,000 entries on our APL website through the index, whereas on the Ancestry collection, they only have about 194,000. So you're missing a lot of entries if you're just searching within that collection on Ancestry. So again, access our obituary index at apl.org slash obit. And again, you don't need a library card to access it. And hopefully you have luck finding your ancestors. If you have any questions while you're using the index or any questions about our genealogy or library databases, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is on the screen, kstilp at apl.org, or you can give us a call at our reference desk, 920-832-6173. Good luck searching.